Hello and welcome back here to the Wild Wisdom Wellbeing uh, live guest spot. And today I have the wonderful Leslie Waldron with me. Leslie, the uh, Wild Woman Health Coach. And Leslie and I first met through networking when I lived back in Bristol. And I was just blown away by what she does because it's health and it's well-being and it's outdoors. Ticks all my boxes. <laughs> so uh, let me just give a little bit of background about Leslie. Uh, she was coming to the edge of burnout a few years ago and having worked in a senior position in a national organization, having two young children, one of whom was not sleeping well, had reached that point and then realized that it was time to do some self-investment, self-care and came to the point uh, of setting up her wonderful business. So without any more ado, Leslie, if I could hand over to you and just ask you to tell us a little bit about yourself and about the amazing work that you do. Thank you so much, Robin, and thank you for having me. Um, I love having the opportunity to talk to people who are very much on the same wavelength as me. Um, so yes, yeah, so, so as you said, I got, got to the edge, edge of burnout, it must have been um, seven or eight years ago now, and I um, kind of put myself back together again using, I kind of I did a bit of reading, and I started using meditation, and I've always been out, I'd always rather be outdoors than in. So um, running and walking and just time outside in nature, and you know, changing up my nutrition and just looking after myself, because there was nothing I could do about sleep deprivation. Um, I quit my job, I could do something about the stress of that, but I, but in order to put myself back together again, I needed to find things that were around the issue rather because this, the, the sleep issue couldn't be addressed. And actually, and it gave me the space to go, well, actually, I, I want to do something different. I want to have a direct impact on people. And I want to bring some of this, some of it that I naturally do. And I want to learn how I could then help other women to do the same thing. And I, so I went down the route of, of um, training to be a personal trainer. Well, I didn't really, I don't like gyms. I don't really like, because I think movement is magic. Movement is absolutely magic. It's healing. It's, um, it, it has supports our immune system. It supports our mental and physical well-being on so many, and spiritual well-being on so many different levels. And so, so it was always about being outdoors. And so the, the, the business that I established was called Wild Country Woman. I live in a little corner of um, the North Somerset countryside where the woodland behind me is called the Wild Country, which I always loved. And so it seemed perfect for me to kind of bring that into what I was doing. So I run outdoor fitness classes and I used to do beginner running courses and I was doing one-to-one -one, um, personal training. And I and it was always about supporting women to fall in love with exercise and movement and outdoors, but also to take account of the seasons and not be battling against them, but to you to work with them. So the kind of exercises that I would do and even the running that I would do in the winter was different to what I would do in the spring and the summer. And um, and then I was really became really fascinated by most of the women that I worked with were in their 40s and 50s. And, and were experiencing the impact of hormone change. And I had become intrigued by perimenopause um, in my late 30s because the effects of stress and sleep deprivation had, had a huge impact on my own hormones. Mm -hmm. And so, and somebody had suggested back then that I was in perimenopause and I was horrified by the idea. But I went down this route of learning a little bit more and I had um, I did, found a course that I could do called The Third Age Woman, which actually brought movement and nutrition and stress management all under and understanding of women's hormones and hormone change all under one roof. And it, which was I was it was brilliant. It was absolutely blown away by that. And then but one of the women who that was the course was um, produced by three different women coming from you know, from physiotherapy, from nutrition, and from movement. Um, and one of those women was a health coach, and I just fell in love with that idea of coaching and realised that that's what how I loved doing my work it was not about telling people what to do, but how, but bringing out of them what it is that they love doing, and find helping them find their direction because we are we are shudded at 
all of the time, aren't we? We're told what we should do. And lots of messaging in the last year that we've had has been about, you know, about you should be doing this and you should be doing this. And and, and actually, you know, and almost saying, well, it's, it's your fault if you get sick. But um, I think that actually we, when we are allowed to listen into ourselves, when we have a um, when we have a suitable listening ear and reflection, when we're given the space, we can really make a massive impact on our own well-being. And when, but we need a little bit of empowered understanding as well. And so that's what I like to do is bring in bring in research-based information. So coming, so whether that's looking at functional, whether that's looking at nutrition, whether it's looking at movement, whether it's looking at stress, whether it's looking at the brain, I went down, I've been down a bit of a brain, brain health um, neuroscience route over the last um, year or so as well. And bring that all, bring some information together and then allow the women I work with to make the decisions that work for them. And, and it is, and it is transformative. But I always look at everything with a seasonal eye as well. So the way I work with a health coach, the way I work with women, whether it's in a group or in a um, one-to-one, will always be, it will change season to season um, um, what it is that we're doing for ourselves. And um, that actually it's okay to hibernate a little bit in the winter. And that if we don't hate on ourselves, um, when we come out of the winter and we're feeling like we've we've put on a few pounds or our jeans are a bit snug, then it's okay because that's what our biology is actually telling us to do. Like ancient biology is is actually driving us towards carbohydrates and storing fat in the winter because of the lean times that we used to experience for many thousands of years. And we haven't really got over that yet. So, so and actually it's, and then, you know, and that, so you move more. So yeah, so I like to bring all of those things in together and I work with women with their menstrual cycles, with the natural cycles, with understanding their hormones and build that empowered understanding, which I really rather enjoy, as you can probably <laughs> tell, because I start experiencing a lot. And so, but because it's really, just really very powerful. Um, it, it, it doesn't need to be difficult either. It can be that simple, just basic, straightforward steps. And just before I go any further, I want to say good morning to Tammy, who has joined us. Tammy is quite a regular viewer. Uh, she and I know each other by working through a uh, coach together last year. Um, so, yeah, I think that's so important, isn't it? Listening to our bodies, like you say, we are should at all the time. And sometimes... I think we're bombarded with information and we've certainly seen that over the last year when everything's been online and there's been so much mm. conflicting information about what we should do, what we shouldn't do, that it's very difficult sometimes to navigate through that and to know what is right for me because mm -hmm. what's put out there is very generic a lot of the time and might not fit me in my place and then if I do it and it doesn't work I often feel it's my fault I'm getting it mm -hmm. wrong versus thinking but that's too generic or it actually suits somebody else it doesn't suit me and that's fine yeah. we're not all the same one size does not fit all it needs to be tailored so if you are gathering all of this very holistic mm -hmm. lots of different perspectives gathering it all together and saying choose yeah what resonates for you? What feels right for you? Try it out. If it doesn't work, that's absolutely fine. That means we've said that's not for me, or at least it's not for me right now. You know, you can just put it to one side. You've still got a whole big buffet to choose from. And there's no right, there's no wrong. There's no punishment if you don't choose this one thing. There's plenty of other things to choose from. And working with that coach actually she talked a lot about the ebb and flow mm. and i think as women particularly because we have monthly cycles and therefore we're quite in tune with the moon sometimes mm. it has quite an influence mm. on our cycles yeah. and on our bodies because we're so much such a high yeah. percentage made of water and i had a guest on before who talked about working with the cycles of the moon yeah. so there's those cycles in nature and also mm. the seasons of course, you know, we eat to have a little bit of extra um, padding and warmth, mm -hmm. insulation coming up to the winter. Of course, we often, I'm a, I'm a hibernator. I mm -hmm. 
I like being outdoors, but I like getting back in to where yeah. it's warm and then just snuggling and mm. having short days where I can just, you know, be lazy, just not yeah. do a lot if it's really cold or if it's mm. dark. And that's that's my normal cycle. And yeah. I fit in around that and it works yeah. so much better than fighting against it, which just makes me feel miserable <laughs> and feel grumpy yeah. and feel like I'm failing. Mm. Because I'm, I'm, yeah, it's just not working for yeah. me. Yeah, and I think I think it's so true. I wondered, I thought I might talk to you a little bit about a client I just worked with this mm. year because it gives a really good example. So she's in her late forties, um, and she had been um, she, she was she, she was reasonably in tune with herself and her life in terms of the fact that she'd made some really quite big choices about her career and that she'd left one aspect and was taking while life while she wanted to be around to support her children her, her marriage had broken down um she was in a new relationship but there was a lot of toing and froing and um the previous relationship hadn't been very positive and and so so she had decided that for the sake of herself and her children she wanted to take a very different sort of job one that she didn't have to think about so just to go and do it but um so that was one thing she'd done but but she was beginning to label herself as she'd been labeling herself as fat for a very long time. And and we can give ourselves these labels, even though we can't actually be, you know, that's not how we are. It's just something that we happen to have at the time. But and that she had been on and off for years, probably decades, um, kind of diets and slimming worlds and um, gone to a personal trainer. But the focus had always been on weight loss. And and for, and I and I, from the very beginning of any any relationship is you know even as a personal trainer is that I can't I won't focus on weight loss because that's negative and our brains actually can't really process that can they they kind of they can't process a negative they'll just hear you know um they'll they'll just hear weight so we'll just so we're not we don't focus on loss we focus on what we bring in. And so with her, she'd lost confidence in the kitchen and she'd lost confidence in, she'd have broken her foot and that had stopped her from moving as much. And then she was feeling a bit kind of heavy and not, you know, kind of getting up and down, even off a chair felt like an effort. And so so what we did is, is I provided these little drips of information, most much of which was, was just reinforcing things she already knew. And all I asked her to do was walk, to start with by walking 15 minutes a day or five days a week to get outside and move her body. And that was all. And then she decided that she wanted to bring meditation back in because it's something that she had used and found effective. So we started with the movement and, the, and then the meditation for the first few weeks. And then she layered in, we layered in thinking about food differently. And she just, she decided that she wanted to start to cook more cook differently um that she was aware that several times a week she would just it would be she'd be cooking from the freezer and it would tend to be kind of beige foods and maybe some frozen peas and that she felt like that she did she knew that she didn't feel good after that so i recommended a couple of cookbooks for her to look at that weren't diet cookbacks but were just easy kind of loads of veg and delicious and in one pan in the oven type like they take about the same time as as oven chips would do but you just have to chop some stuff up and put it in and started with that and and actually she she she, she liked some of those but didn't like all of them and then but it started her she bought one cookbook and then she was like actually i'm gonna have a look at another and another and so by the end of what we'd done she was she was up to she'd started to walk run so she was walking three times she was walking she was walking nearly every day, sometimes twice a day. Started when she got back to work from furlough. She started cycling to work twice a week, and then she's and then she's so she then had a she had a list of 18, 18 different meals that she enjoyed cooking and that the rest of her family enjoyed. And of those, at least a third of them could be batch cooked, so that she could still cook from the freezer, but not necessarily. But it would be something that was you know packed full of nutrition. nutrition. And she, at the same time, she was working. She had headaches and other issues that were hormone related. And we got her tuned into her hormones, tuned into what were the triggers. And the headaches got her drinking more water. The headaches pretty much went. And so we got to the end, and I was like, I offer somebody at the end of the twelve weeks. I say, 
what we can do is continue with a monthly check-in if you feel you need it um or or you continue and and you know and i'll follow up with you in three months time but she didn't need she didn't even need the check-in she was like actually i've got enough it was just brilliant and her hormones were changed her sleep had improved her pelvic floor was um coping better with more movement and her she wasn't having issues and it was just layer upon layer but i she wanted me to give her a plan at the beginning and i didn't give her a plan but she created her own and so it works for her and it works for her children and they were all as you say they were simple things but just that gentle accountability week by week layers up and layers up and layers up into something that actually really boosts your well-being and your sense of power over mm. your own health and your long-term health as well which i think is really powerful and there were two really big things that hit me there and um, that she made the choices yeah. she put it together it's her plan she had ownership so mm -hmm. of course she's going to want to follow it and know that if and when life changes and that things change as she, she wants to change her plan she can she can tweak it easily because yeah. well she created that one yeah. it's not it's not that oh dear i am yeah. dependent on leslie that yeah. i can't do it by myself and yeah that I, I can't remember what the other thing was now but that yeah that she created that herself it was so empowering it was so simple mm -hmm. oh yes the other thing was that she already knew these things but she just needed to be told you can give yourself permission to do Not them yeah, and absolutely. trust to trust that your body mm -hmm. knows what it needs mm -hmm. and it can do that yeah. if you just allow it to show you mm -hmm. what is right for you and yeah. start off because we want sometimes don't we the magic wand right i'm here i want oh, to be yeah. there yeah. i don't want the journey of magic pill it really would but but i think we we say we don't want to take the journey from a to b we just want to be at b but we forget that the journey is the learning the journey is you know if it's like don't focus on the destination mm -hmm. just enjoy the journey and the, it is so much part of well it is it just is the thing isn't it really yeah in the journey is, i mean every every difficult thing that you go through gives you learning and gives you that sense of power you know power is really important empowerment that's kind of how do i empower my clients how do i how do i empower everybody i ever have a conversation with about my work to go ahead and and make the choices for themselves i think that's that's a key thing and um, it's, we we both kind of have the same end outcome in sight we yes. want the person to no longer need us we want to be yes unnecessary, unnecessary. make myself redundant you know exactly. make myself a superfluous and and i always think that's you know i i keep the door open but i do think that actually generally women move on and sometimes it's because they're ready to move to the next stage which might be about might be about joining a gym or a class or something like that where it might be about um um about new challenges but but there's all or it, and the, um or it might be that they want to explore different ways of, of cooking and eating or you know there's all kinds of things or it could just be that they just feel better about themselves full stop yeah. um so it's exciting and i mean it, as you know it's incredibly fulfilling work and um both for me and for my clients so i feel very privileged to be able to do it absolutely i completely agree and it's when you see somebody they come to you and you see in them so much potential and, and beauty and strength and resilience mm -hmm. and skills and tools that they're maybe not seeing at this point yeah but through that journey there are those little light bulb moments where oh i've got this skill and oh i can use that yeah. and i think that's been one of the gifts of this year it's been a really tough really challenging mm -hmm. year but it has really helped us to see things like the strengths we never knew we had the resilience we never knew we had so when you were saying about challenges come mm -hmm. they're learning and growth opportunities because if i overcome them oh my goodness i mm -hmm. had that resilience yeah. strength skill resources that i mm. didn't realize before but if yeah. somebody else could see them in me somebody else could believe in me until i can believe in myself yeah. and until it's like um riding the bike and you see the child and don't take off the stabilizers yeah. and say, no, don't but we'll keep them on until you realize yeah. actually they're not there anymore i've taken them yeah. off for you 
take off yeah. the armbands, let all the air out of the armbands. You're swimming. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing in, in there anymore. Yeah. Take off you know, are swimming. You know, in order to in order to thrive, we we need to be able to take certain risks. Um, but if those risks or challenges can be undertaken knowing that we've got the support it's like you and I and anybody here watching who's running a small business is like I now know it's like well so my business has survived a year of a global pandemic it was a face-to-face -face business and I, but I'm still that I had to kind of put so many things on hold but you know I'm still here so I, you know so actually and so the next challenge that comes up will be well do you know what? my business survived a global pandemic so it can survive this. And then um, um, I use the analogy when going through labor both times, I um, always like, well, do you know what? It's a contraction is just a bit like every mile that I would run in a half marathon or something like that. I'd be like, I don't have to do that mile again. I've got another one, but I don't have to do that mile again. So every, so it's like, so distance running and labor. I kind of made yes. those two. If I, could, if I could get to the end of a half marathon, I can get to the end of this. <laughs> Well, it's that one day at a time. We find strength from our challenges too. So. We do. And we we recognise our strengths that we didn't know we had, mm -hmm. the resources that we didn't know we had. Yeah. And looking at the kind of, we've survived the, the global pandemic a year now, we mm -hmm. thought it was only going to be a few months, a few weeks, a few months, it'll all be over, we'll be back again doing our thing. Mm -hmm. And here we are over a year later and we're mm -hmm. still in a changed environment. Yeah. But to know that people have survived, people have set yeah. up successful businesses yeah. in lockdown. It really goes to show that a lot of it is mindset and that mm. a lot of it is how we approach things. So uh, and, and tuning in and, and trusting, coming back to that as well, I think. Mm. Yeah, and, learning and, to trust ourselves is really powerful, really yeah. powerful. Doing the things that resonate for us, so not pushing against, not resisting. Mm listening to well i feel that this is the right way for me to go and you illustrated that as well with that kind of case study that you just mm. shared how that woman d made the choices and yourself leaving mm. the uh, national organization that you used to work for because mm. actually i'm going to do the things that i can yeah. control the things that i can make the changes where i can mm. and then knowing that doing that will make other things fall yeah. into place better than, yeah. than they were before yeah and all of those things involve a certain amount of 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 risk taking and trust and so that's one of the things that i always want to think want to give to my clients is mm -hmm. a sense of trust in themselves so um yeah which is really important. Okay, sorry print print is going to randomly start <laughs> gone off. but as, as people say it proves that it's live uh and people talk about having a trust in whoever they're working with. But I think that is huge when the coach can help the person to trust themselves, trust their own sense of self, their own intuition, their own sense of this is right for me. That isn't what I want to do. Because sometimes people certainly they come to me and they just go, I don't know, because they have been disempowered. So to give that power back to somebody. <laughs> I think it's stopped now. <laughs> to give that power back to somebody, to help them feel, feel strong in themselves again, yeah, I think is so huge. In, in terms of you know mental strength, physical strength, emotional strength. <laughs> That'll explain that then. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on now. <laughs> it's a bit like when I uh, tried to do interviews like this where there was homeschooling going on and you'd have a small child come in. And, oh. Yeah, it's always all part of the fun. We get to see people's homes and their home lives now in a way that we never <laughs> did. People's no. animals, people's children. Well, we, we, this is like an office that's out, like a garden office. So it's like, normally it's reasonably private. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's going on there. You need a do not disturb sign. Yeah, well, actually, what I usually do is I put the blinds down and mm -hmm. I haven't done that. To, I, if I'm on a call, so that I, so that they're kind of, that's a signal not to come in. And I didn't do that today. So 
um, because it's hard though when, when you know you've got sunshine you want to keep the sunshine you don't want yeah. to <laughs> <laughs> anyway somebody like you who loves of lighting and, doors and natural light mm. yes got lots of light there yeah. So yeah, so that that power is important, and um, and feet, and but also knowing ourselves, and that's where it, like so many of the women that I work with are in in that perimenopausal stage, and I um so and um, you know I I struggle with I don't want people to give themselves labels like really strong labels that that they then are attached to, and then and that those are labels that are really negative. So what I like to do is help. Is, is, is think about creating an empowered perimenopause. So an understanding of, an understanding of, of how, how hormones affect, how, how more hormones affect your menstrual, in your menstrual circle and how they might affect you as they decline through perimenopause. And an understanding of how you can take action to support that hormone change and protect your health for the long term, because actually, when we lose um, estrogen and progesterone, we lose a lot of their protective benefits for our heart and our bones and our brains. So, taking action now is an absolute prime time, but not from a place of fear. And and I think that's really important um, that that we understand what's going on with our health and well being. But we we take action from a place of empowered empowered action rather than from a place of running away from the fear of aging or the fear of of, of ill health. And I think that's really important. I think there's so much out there about brittle bones for older women, osteoporosis, mm -hmm. and there's so much out there about to mention cognitive decline. It's mm -hmm. a very big hot topic at the moment. Yeah. So there is a lot of fear as. There, you know, we, we go through phases of these things. There was a mm. lot of fear about cancer. That's less so now because we know that there are a lot of steps that we can take. Yeah. And there's still fear, but not. it's not quite as big. Maybe, mm. you know, it's quite the big C that it was. Yeah. We can talk about it now as well. Yeah. And there's more information available yeah. to empower ourselves. And we know yeah. that if we go to the doctor, we can say, no, I want somebody with me because I want them to be able to hear what you say in case yeah. I'm not able to remember it afterwards because my brain will be in shock and yeah. all of these sorts of things. And I think with the menopause, it's one of those women's things that we don't talk about. Yeah. So I, I love that there are people out there like yourself who are mm. bringing it to the fore and saying, no, we'll bring, you know, this is something to talk about. It's not something yeah. to be a taboo subject. It's something that we women need to know about. It's something yeah. that men need to know about. Yeah. Uh, because if we're married, we have children or we mm. work in, a, mm. in a, an environment that's a mixed environment they're mm. all going to be affected too so they need yeah. to understand and because there's so much maybe myth and mm. misconception and lack of knowledge and understanding mm. that we don't know what to expect and mm. well will i get hot flushes and will my bones start to mm. thin and yeah. become weak and and all of the stuff around how it affects your thought processes mm. so just knowing all of that mm. and being okay that's you know what we don't know is more frightening yeah because our mind doing. comes up with all of these potentials yeah. rather than right i know now and i therefore know what action i can take yeah. i know how i can support myself yeah rather than and just like, feel so lost. yeah feeling lost or feeling or feeling kind of out of control with it i suppose so um we um my brain fog. Often, one of the first things that I end up well, that I speak to women about is is mood and is is how that changes, and then being able to link that with hormone change is really powerful. Because actually, for some women, um, as they head through perimenopause, they might find that actually their PMS and is really heightened, is re in, and that they get kind of this red rage you know this red um red wall <laughs> that comes down and it um and that they and it's not something they've experienced before and that they've not um and find it quite scary but understanding that it's both linked to um 
hormone change can be really powerful. So tracking your menstrual cycle becomes really useful because you can almost predict when those days might start to happen. And then by predicting them and going, oh yeah, this is an angry day. I'm gonna get angry. <laughs> I'm gonna get angry. So like I can I can so that happens to me. So I can it, and particularly if I've been stressed. So if so if I've been stressed, that's gonna knock my hormones off a little bit for a while. Or if I've not looked after myself in terms of my usual stress management tools, or if I've had a few nights where I've not slept very well. So but I can just say to my family, you know how there's a few days when I get really angry and that sometimes it's a little bit disproportionate. Well, this is one of those days. So I suggest that you just do what I ask you to do today, or I will get disproportionately angry. So you can choose. <laughs> and I love and it. It also gives them power, a little bit of power back, because it says rather than just being a little bit scary, you can just say, oh, well, actually. <laughs> Mum's just having one of her days. Yeah. And I can just withdraw. Yeah. But it's it's also, room. <laughs> yeah. It helps them us to know that actually I'm not going crazy. Yeah. yeah. I'm not well, going horribly wrong with me. Yeah. Um, because I think when, as we go through perimenopause, as we go, as we leave behind our kind of mothering, nurturing years, looking after like our biology, whether or not we have children, our biology is driving us to nurture mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. And as those hormones drop um drop down and as we as a, and as we as our as we go through perimenopause and towards menopause and our postmenopausal years our crone years which i find quite i'm quite excited about that. i'm really quite excited about that. <laughs> but um but then but actually it is because that, because we don't want to have to put up with everybody looking after everybody so much anymore. And th therefore our anger is amplified because why should I put everyone else's needs before my own? And that part of our perimenopause is learning, yes, about how to look after our health, but actually how to put boundaries down and how to go, well, actually, what do I want? You know, what do I want and how can I get what I want? In um, Not as in whether I want a handbag, but whether, what I want from my life. You know, what do I want my life to look like? And that's not often a question that we ask ourselves. I think. Until sometimes we get to that point where maybe the children have grown up and all of a sudden I'm not in that mothering role in the same way that mm -hmm. I used to be, not dependent on me in that way. Or, mm -hmm. you know, life does change. And I think that's a very important point that we need to be able to put our boundaries down, whatever point in life we're at. Yes. We need to be able to focus on our own self-care whatever point in life we're at because that role models to other people if nothing else yeah. you know as well as taking care of ourselves and then we're not trying to pour from an, an empty cup and we're not so run ragged that we're irritable for whatever reason yeah yeah absolutely i think it's really important that we do that um and and actually it would be powerful for us to learn to do that from 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 early adulthood really is to learn how to put those boundaries down but it's not part of our learning and actually also our biology is to a certain extent driving us towards making social connections and being liked and being accepted by the group and all of that kind of stuff anyway and it just slightly changes as we step into um our, our power years really aren't they our power years of our um our um perimenopause menopause and beyond and if and we I got think, back to, I, that, that, hmm? Sorry. I was just going to say, if we got back to that seasons of our lives, yeah. as native peoples would do very naturally, because mm -hmm. they would have the crone who was the yeah. wise woman, and that would be a very revered and respected role mm -hmm. that yeah. women would have, versus sometimes in our society they've been dismissed once they get past yeah, the certain exactly. Yeah, it dismissed in so many different ways. So learning to ha find our voice now is really important um and not just not to get lost behind and um i kind of see that a little bit in my own mother who is finds it very hard to articulate what she wants and then it's very hard to know how to support her adequately because she doesn't know how to ask for what she wants because she's never not often been asked that question and put the needs of others before her own for such a long time and um and there are many things about that that were really wonderful but we do need to learn and go well actually um that that mother figure needs to be a strong woman who who can show who can you can learn your 
your own boundaries from as well, which is really yes. important and valuable. And I always think there's a lesson in nature as well. I mean, I love, as, as you know, you and I are the same. We love being outside and there's a lesson in nature. And there's a there's a tree, there's an oak tree. The, one, one of the main reasons we bought the house that we live in now is that there's an oak tree in the garden. And um, that was several of the houses that I lived in growing up had an oak tree in the garden. But in the tree in the field next to my house, there is a great big old tree. And I call her the grandmother tree for some reason, because she looks older than all of the other trees because she's bigger and wider. And she is probably, she probably is like at that 600 year old mark and perhaps coming to the last third of her life. And, um, but I, all the way through the last year, the pandemic and, um, everything else I've kind of looked to this grandmother tree is kind of like do you know what how many how many kind of really dramatic things in history has this tree lived through and she's still living now and I feel and also learning about trees and understanding how how they all support each other through this fungal network behind them and underneath them and how that they they share their wisdom in a completely different way to the way that we humans would understand it but it still is this incredible network. So I've been using this this grandmother tree. I'll kind of go out and visit her quite regularly if I need my own little bit of wisdom, because because the trees live through so much and for so long that sometimes I think they're a really good beacon for us to understand to, how to make the most of our lives every day because we're not going to live that long, but we will live long and strong if we have strong foundations and strong roots and if we are actually learning to thrive that tree is still trying to get the best light it's still trying to do its best and we'll still be offering some support and so the grandmother tree and i are quite good friends <laughs> they are fascinating my mum bought me an amazing book a few years ago all about trees that talked about the fungal roots and mm. tim and i went on a fantastic tree walk talk mm. where the guy talked about oak trees as a, a great example mm. where they go through these phases of life and then yeah. you get the staghorn trees which is where the insides have all been eaten out as a yeah. new source of food for the tree yeah. and we have a fantastic old beech tree and it has grown up and twisted so it's just it's mm. so beautiful and where mm. bits of bark have come off and there are patterns yeah. in I don't know what you call a bit beneath that would be exposed <laughs> when the bark comes off. But yeah, there's just, they are so, so many allegories and stories. Absolutely, and so yeah. If I can find a metaphor, it will usually be in a tree. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love the one of, are you looking in the leaves for what is actually, are you looking in the branches for what actually needs to be looked at in the roots? Yeah. That sort of thing, you know, go within, all of yeah. that. Stuff. There's so much mm. in nature. You could just be here for a year. <laughs> 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 And going yeah. back to what you were saying about following seasons and and your your classes would be seasonal yeah. and doing different running mm. in different seasons. I think that's brilliant because I, I'm not a great runner. I'd be a walker mm. rather than a runner. But mm. you, you have that changing it up for the season. So it's never yeah. boring. You're doing yeah. something different mm. each season and different things then to look forward to because each season has its own beauties and joys, yeah. doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. And you can push yourself differently. I mean, we have seasons of our cycle as well. And I really like using that as a, as a, as a, as a way for women to understand their menstrual cycles is, you know, the seasons of our lives and there are seasons of our cycles. And actually, we can look to the seasons of the year and kind of build a picture then of how actually, you know, every, every month we have a winter phase and we do need to hibernate a little bit. And, and every month, will have that amazing kind of summer ovulation phase where we can push ourselves much harder and if you build that into how you whether you're a runner whether you're a cyclist or a swimmer whether you ride a horse you probably have a different relationship with a horse at different points in your menstrual cycle um yeah but you can and having one of these, having a boy and a girl mm. relating to them differently and the girl obviously she has her cycles too yeah. so although i don't ride them Mm. just spending time with them and relating mm. to them yes probably yeah. that's very true yeah with, and yeah and our relationships around us i think it's all fascinating oh well it's been really think, lovely speaking to you robin yeah, yeah. I was just, on for hours and hours <laughs> <laughs> i was just going to say that's a perfect point mm. at which to round it up a perfect kind of way you think 
thought to leave people mm. with of for self-care because I love asking people about self-care thoughts mm. so self-care tip for today to listen to the cycles of your body and to the cycles of the year and mm. how that natural cycle teach us, teaches us so much about ourselves so thank you Leslie so much it's been great thank to reconnect you. with you it's and lovely. thank you for coming and sharing so much of your wisdom with us today thank so Tune in again next week before my next wonderful guest. I'll be posting more information about that soon. Goodbye for now. Bye.